What more? Faith moves mountain. You as you said. Don't move this mountain, okay? <laughs> uh, but it also freezes the mind. So where do we draw the line? And we need faith for everything. Please take care of this lady. <laughs> I don't want her to move this mountain anywhere else. <laughs> People <laughs> who visit the ashram, sometimes I meet them somewhere and they come and say, what a beautiful place you created. I, I keep telling them I didn't make the mountains. <laughs> because that is the most beautiful aspect of the ashram is the mountains. <laughs> so don't move it, please. Moving a mountain is a crime. In many ways, faith has been a crime on this planet. The worst kind of crime has happened in the name of faith. Yes. Moving a mountain is definitely a crime. You can move somewhere, don't move the mountain. <laughs> so it may move the mountains but it freezes the mind for sure. When we say faith, we have completely misunderstood what faith is. It's become a belief system. You believe something and you think you are in some faith. The way the word faith is being used today is a certain set of beliefs is a certain faith. Another set of beliefs is another faith. In that context, this quote. <laughs> if you just believe something hard and fast, because either you are born into that culture or somebody has really worked upon you, or some other compulsion has made you take to it. The moment you believe this is it, then there is no need for your mind. Mind is a tool for exploration, not for drawing conclusions. Unfortunately, most people are using their mind to draw conclusions. This mind is not about drawing conclusions, this is a tool for exploration. That you can continue to look at life, in deeper and deeper ways, in more profound ways of experience and knowing. That's the significance of the mind. If you had to just draw conclusions, you don't need such a complex structure of mind. You don't need it. Now, the disease of doubt and suspicion, you try to fix it with faith. No. You just have to refine your logic. You have to refine the nature of your mind that you need to understand that there is a way to be in this world without taking any position. That's why the postures, yoga postures, you understand? <laughs> to twist yourself this way, that way because to understand that I don't want to take any particular position in my life. I am not stuck this way or that way. I am born to know life from every possible direction. Every possibility that this life is, I wish to know when I'm alive. So if that has to happen, you need a flexible mind, a mind that has not taken positions, a mind does not, does not believe or disbelieve something. See, do not think disbelief is an option. Belief and disbelief are not two different things, they are positive belief or negative belief, that's all they are, two different ways of believing. Belief, belief and disbelief. So we are not talking about faith versus atheism, belief versus disbelief, no. We are talking about why can't you learn to not take a position of anything. Right now to conduct a particular activity we take positions, but there is no need to take positions to live, to be alive here. If you want to know life, you should not take any position or any opinion about anything. The moment you form an opinion, that means you are not open to anything else, isn't it? Whether it's about a person or yourself or about the life around you, you don't form any kind of opinion or conclusion. Conclusion means death, yes? Life means no conclusion, you're looking. Instead of sharpening your vision, you're drawing a conclusion because conclusion brings a certain certainty. 
it brings a certain confidence. The moment you believe something, you're confident. Confidence without clarity is a disaster. It's better to see clearly rather than just believe something. If you believe something, it gives you confidence and sometimes it works, unfortunately. We've been talking about this all the way long. Even if you want to cross a street, what you need is clarity of vision, not confidence. Confidence can kill. The traffic is not much, it works. <laughs> That's the whole problem with it. <laughs> yes, the traffic is not much and it's not fast. Then it works and now you think it works, you apply it everywhere, you will get hit. So you don't need confidence. If you just give up your need for confidence, you're okay being here, not knowing anything. Actually, you don't know nothing. Please look at this. You really don't know anything about the nature of this existence, isn't it? Yes or no? You don't know when this entire solar system is going to fall apart. Maybe it's tomorrow morning, do you know? Do you know whether it is going to fall apart tomorrow morning or not? Do you know? You don't know when you'll fall dead. You don't know when it's going to happen. But it's all right. But if you are that kind of a mind which is looking for faith, you know everything, not just here. Beyond death, where you will go, what kind of accommodations you will get there, you know the works. This kind of knowing, is what needs to go. Uh, an ignorance which is aware and acknowledged by yourself that I'm ignorant is a far more powerful and profound state than a knowledge that you have concluded about. You have conclusions about everything and everybody. Just try this one simple sadhana in your life, all of you. Whatever conclusions you have about yourself, about the people around you, about the situations around you, just give it up tonight. Tomorrow morning just wake up and look at everything fresh. Just do this every day, at least see if you can maintain this for the first one hour after you're awake. You will see it will take lots of work. You understand? It will take lots of work, twenty-four hours of the day to look at everything fresh. If you're looking at everything fresh, you will not miss a single possibility. Everything is alive to you. Where people see nothing, you will see all kinds of things. Where people see problems, you will see possibilities in life. But the moment you conclude, if you make conclusions and you concretize it and then you get it endorsed by heaven, then you're calling that faith. Ignorance endorsed by a great authority will not become truth. This is the biggest problem that people think authority is truth. Now, truth is the only authority in the creation, in this existence.